Good morning guys and welcome back to the garden. If you're new here, hi, I'm Brie. I live in Kansas Zone 6B and today I'm gonna to give you a tour of my garden in the month of August. This is one of my favorite videos to make throughout the months and the years to show you guys how much the garden really changes and evolves. And this is a big transition month around here. We are really going into fall at the moment. I just pulled out a bunch of plants, got some new stuff planted. There's stuff kind of at the tail end and there's also stuff that's really about to produce. So there is a lot to talk about today. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So as always, let's go ahead and just start out in the front. So I have some beautiful goldy honeys at the moment, but I really feel like these will not be here probably in a few weeks time. A lot of my sunflowers are really starting to clonk out. I started to really hit probably peak bloom about I'd say about two weeks ago now. So all the sunflowers are really starting to just clonk out, but I did plant out a few more that should bloom right before our first average frost. So I'm hopeful this was the plan. I really wanted to have sunflowers blooming throughout the fall season. I took a lot out. I got some beans planted. I got some peas planted around here, especially in the insides of the trellis where it does shade out a little bit. So this is one of my most sunny areas. So I didn't want to put too many like cool weather crops around here. So I did plant a lot of green beans in this area. So if I had any nooks and crannies, I pretty much was just placing a green bean because um, that's the lovely thing about green beans. They don't take a lot of space. And if you have these little pockets that you have some space and just stick a bean. So that's one thing I did around here. And then I obviously have my pink bumblebee plant and I just, I've been harvesting this so much. I've been freeze drying so many cherry tomatoes and I'm so excited about the storage I'm getting, to, I'm getting for winter. I really love how they reconstitute and they freeze dry and it's really like using pretty much a fresh tomato, especially when I'm doing it for like my pasta and pizza recipes. I'm so excited about this because these tomatoes are so amazing. I think I probably have probably one or two on here that probably need picked. I've picked so many lately, but there actually is a few that I could go ahead and pick. But this pink bumblebee is just a beautiful striped variety, but the inside is so, so red and it's so flavorful and nothing compares to this tomato. And I really hate buying cherry tomatoes in the off season. I just hate buying tomatoes in general. They just really aren't good. So I'm really excited about freeze drying a bunch of these this year. Another thing I did in this space was I went through and really pruned up my zinnias, hopefully to get another round of blooms. They're looking so good at the moment. They were not not looking too hot. We had a really hot stretch there at the end of July. We were really mild going into July and I'm sure I probably mentioned that in my garden tour, but at the end of July we had feel likes of over a hundred for like a week and a half, two weeks. So it was really hot and a lot of the plants that have been in the garden for a while were starting to struggle. But so I'm really excited to see what these do here in the next few months because we do still have a good amount of growing time. Our first expectant frost around here is October 16th and I believe we're probably sitting at like 66 maybe 65 days at the point of making this video so I do have a lot of my fall stuff out but I will still be planting a few more things like another round of like lettuces and spinaches and bok choy. I do need to get that in the ground pretty soon but that's also some things that I'll be planting out. I do really Really need to deadhead this one sunflower. Let me do this real fast. Ooh, let's see. I don't want the squirrels to get it because I keep letting these die back and this has been die back for a while and I'm really shocked a squirrel hasn't got it yet. Oh, beautiful. I've been trying to save more goldy honey bear seeds, especially since that one was a volunteer. Wow, those are some beautiful seeds awesome. If you are ever curious about when a sunflower is ready to be picked, the back of the sunflower will turn this like pale yellow color. You can even let it go a little bit longer where it turns a little bit more white, but I found that if you let it go a little too long, again, birds and squirrels will end up getting it. So I will say the one thing I'm not too impressed with is the drumstick flower. It really hasn't done that well for me, but I really just love the look of it. I love the way it dries. So it pretty much dries this exact same way. So I already have like a stash of probably like seven or eight of them that are dry. I'm trying to do a dried bouquet of them, but they really haven't produced too much. I had a really hard time getting the second leg started. I had a whole plant clock out 
and this is the only one that's like really producing for me so i'm going to give them another chance but this one was not a favorite so far this year so so far i've had a pretty good year with peppers this was the year i really wanted to redeem myself with bell peppers and so far i feel like i have i have gotten some beautiful bell peppers i haven't gotten that many i would say at this point, I probably got about seven of them as like a ripe bell pepper. I do have a few more really going on these plants, but the last few years I have just not done pretty much anything with bell peppers. And this year, these bell peppers are beautiful. I'm getting like big, beautiful, red, store-bought quality bell peppers. So I'm very happy about that. I've been getting so much paprika peppers as well. These are the Hungarian magars. And I will say I'm at the current point where I have harvested so many peppers that I'm currently waiting for my next wave. I currently don't have any jalapenos to harvest. I probably won't for like another week or two. But the one thing I wanted to mention was the cayenne. So I think I'm starting to get my next wave of cayennes, but these plants started off really strong and they were giving me some beautiful cayennes. Then out of nowhere, I was having the issue where they weren't fully like m maturing. I don't really know how to explain this, but like they would start to ripen and then dry out on the plant. And I had no idea what was going on. The one thing I don't like about this variety either, I believe this is the red rocket variety. Um, it's a hybrid um, cayenne that's supposed to be more high producing is this is a very thin, thin skinned um, cayenne pepper, which is great for drying, but it's very, very hard to prep. Um, I've had other cayenne varieties in the past that had just a little bit thicker of a skin that dried just as beautifully and they were a lot easier to work with. So I honestly don't know if I would plant this cayenne variety again. I don't have any more seeds so I would have to repurchase them. I honestly think I'm going to try a different cayenne variety next year. So if you have any good varieties please leave those in the comments below. I would love to know. Um, but yeah I have cayennes, jalapenos. I also have a serrano plant over here and serrano's they produce like crazy. So I really would like to get one more batch of salsa made. I did one batch of salsa and it's a little bit more mild and I wanna make one more batch hot and I wanna do mostly just jalapenos and serranos for that salsa. So I'm currently waiting for those to be put on. But overall, this has been a pretty good pepper year. I honestly can't complain about the peppers. So this is a really fun thing. My squash plant was, I would say a volunteer because I, I planted squash, but then I didn't plant squash. I pulled the squash, planted these carrots. Then once I planted the carrots, this guy popped up and I was like, well, I'm gonna leave it. So this was out a little bit. I haven't planted squash. Here's the reason, because vine bore. I kind of given up on just your basic everyday green squash, your zucchini squash, because vine bore is a pain in my butt. But I didn't plant this, so I was like, you know what? We'll, we'll see what happens. This is going to be complete toss up. I don't know. Uh, I didn't know. So there's a window with vine bore and I didn't know if this really kind of got seeded out. Well, either way, this week, it was like what? I think it was two or three days ago. I came out here and I noticed the bottom of the vine right here was not looking so hot. And that's like your first indicator for vine bore. Um, I did surgery on this plant. I completely cut open the base or like the stem and like pulled it apart here let me show you the wound I've kind of covered it up I need to put some more dirt over here you can see my little wound area right here I cut this open and I was able to get four vine bore out I even cut these two leaves off and I was able to get vine bore out of like those little nuggets so I was able to find all of them and this plant honestly hasn't been struggling which I'm kind of shocked about this is the first time I've really just like it took me five seconds to do a, a little surgery on the zucchini. And since this was such a kind of experiment anyway, I was like, you know what, why not? I would love to get some zucchini. You can see there's some starting to form, but I'm going to put some more dirt at the base after this video, um, just to kind of help that stem, you know, but it, we've been pretty warm. This has got sunlight. I mean, it's not wilting. I was expecting it to wilt and probably die since I've never done anything like that. But I honestly might end up getting some zucchini out of it. So another little volunteer in this area that popped up is a chamomile plant, which I'm not mad about. I also planted out another round of carrots over here. I 
I originally planted out the other round and then we got so hot and I just really had crappy germination. So I did another round. So hopefully, hopefully these ones germinate a little better. One thing I love about this time of year is all of the trellises really filling out. You can see how much my trellis tunnel really adds some privacy to the backyard. And I love my trellis tunnel. It's one of my favorite things in the garden. So I was actually telling my husband the other day that instead of having the grow bags, we'll go over there and I'll explain this a little bit more, but instead of having the grow bags over there, I think I want to extend my tunnel another eight feet and maybe plant some like more tomatoes or something over there. So this is all tomatoes. These are San Morzanos. And one thing I've been noticing is my San Morzanos have been pretty small until recently. So I'm still not getting like the biggest San Morzanos. I've had the most beautiful Romas, but this is like the biggest San Morzano I've gotten. I don't know why, but I've not had the best luck with San Morzanos. Um, so we're, we'll see, it's really starting to produce. This is getting so much fruit on it and they all look really good. Um, it's just for some reason, I've had smaller San Morzano fruit. It, typically those are some bigger tomatoes. Um, so that's really interesting, at least so I think. I also have the sunflowers that I mentioned. I have a sunflower here, here, here. So I have three, I planted out, what, four, four or five, and I only got three. I'll take three though. This one's doing really well. I also planted some kale. And then here in the spring, I had lettuce lining the inside of the trellis. And I also planted my lettuce here. This will be really good just because this will shade out more and more um, as we enter August and it's still pretty hot. Helping save my lettuce, fingers crossed. This is a romaine variety called Paris Island, which is supposed to be a little bit more heat tolerant, but in my experience, it's never really been. So I still like it. As far as the strawberries go, I'm not really getting a whole second wave. I'm getting like a few berries every here and there. Um, so overall, this is a pretty dead area at the moment. But one thing I really wanna do is actually harvest up a bunch of these strawberry leaves because you can do them um, like tea, just like raspberry leaf tea. And it has the same benefits as a raspberry leaf tea. So I really love raspberry leaf tea. So I was going to do a bunch of strawberry leaf for strawberry leaf tea in my freeze dryer. So I need to get on that. So yeah, we got green beans, green beans, green beans. And then we have tomatoes. And then that's a whole bed of tomatoes as well. I did mention to you guys the compost pumpkin, which this is pump, compost pumpkin number two. This guy also popped up as a volunteer. Compost pumpkin number one died. I don't know what happened. I've just been letting this thing kind of go, but this thing has really took off in the last week. So I'll be really curious to see if we get anything out of it. This is one of my favorite areas of the garden. This is my trellis tunnel. I like to call this area trellis Ella. So this is five cattle panels all together. And I like to add two more to where I, had, I would have seven and it would be a 28 foot trellis tunnel that was originally the plan and then i didn't have enough cattle panels and we don't have a truck so these are a little bit harder to get home but we did the 20 foot for the last two years and it's been one of my favorite things the loofah goes all the way to the end and actually just got to the very end so i need to wrap it along the bottom but you can see the loofah is just really starting to produce i've actually gotten seven dried ones already at this point in the game I would say probably whatever starts to form may not dry in time, and I'm probably gonna have a good amount of green loofah again, but that's fine, um, which is, it's whatever. I'll still have probably, probably a handful, maybe like eight to 10 more probably dry out on the vine, um, but the loofah plant's been going crazy. So I also have cucumber here, watermelon here, cantaloupe, and a honey nut squash. So I've been getting a ton of cantaloupe as well. I've gotten, ooh. Mmm, I've gotten six big cantaloupes and they've been amazing. Sorry, I just found squash bug eggs and I needed to make sure I snagged those. Okay, we're gonna put this right here to handle when I'm done. So <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second, but the cantaloupes, the cantaloupes have been amazing. So I grow these big, beautiful cantaloupes. It's a variety called Howl's Jumbo. I love this. So the first year I planted cantaloupe, I planted one called the Charente melon, which is a personal size 
cantaloupe almost is more of an heirloom variety, which the um, house jumbo is also an heirloom variety, but it's just more of a personal melon. Was not my favorite. This house jumbo though, gives you these big, beautiful, just very delicious fruits. So if you are a cantaloupe person, I've had really good luck with that variety and I highly suggest it. This plant was actually um, seeds that I saved from last year's harvest. And I've just been really impressed by these melons. So I actually saved some more and I'm getting another round of cantaloupe starting to form. I actually have a few sitting as we speak and they will, they will fully give me cantaloupe um, before our first expectant frost. So I also have a uh, watermelon over here, which I forgot that this one detached itself yesterday. I need to take this one in. I also need to get the rest of this watermelon harvested as well. It's ready to go. So I'm gonna have a good amount of melon going on. We're finishing up our cantaloupe right now. I cut it all up and we've just been eating cantaloupe every day and I love, I love the cantaloupe. So for the last three and a half weeks, I've been having the squash bug problem. You guys keep laughing at me because I'm always out here with my torch lighter every time I make a video making sure I get this. So I will typically search when I'm just going like this. This is one reason why I love growing vertically because so you can see eggs and squash bugs pretty easily. But someone left me an amazing tip that I wanted to share with you guys because I felt I feel like this is going to be game changer. So they suggested that when I water my squash plant to make sure I'm watching the base of the plant and the squash bugs typically like to hang out at the base of the squash plant. Yesterday alone, I was watering the one plant and out of nowhere seven came out from the base. And this was after I already found five throughout like looking and everything. So I've been missing obviously for quite some time that they were probably hanging out at the base as well. I watered the other side, found another three more. So like it was really crazy how many I just missed because they were hanging out at the base of the plant. And then I also have mulch and they were kind of just underneath the mulch and I would have never seen them. So I love that tip. Thank you to whoever left that tip because I really feel like this is going to be game changer. There was a few day stretch there where I didn't find any eggs or squash bugs though. And I was being really hopeful that they were done. I knew they probably weren't done, but I also have a good amount of honey nut squash. The honey nut squash is looking Looking amazing it's starting to turn color it looks so beautiful so I'm really excited about that so this honey nut squash is a hybrid variety that is actually vine bore resistant it's not squash bug resistant but it is vine bore resistant and I, I've had very good luck with this squash um so that's one reason why I grow it and it is so flavorful. So it's a more of a personal size honey nut or butternut squash. And I love to throw this with potatoes and it adds a lot of just good flavor. It's so good. And with it being more of a personal size, with it just being me and my husband, I noticed that if I cut one of these up, it's like pretty much the perfect size for dinner. So I really love this variety. It's the second year I've grown it. And as long as I keep the squash bugs away, I should get a pretty good harvest. I also have some green beans over here that are starting to trellis up. I have another wave of watermelon. And honestly, the trellis is just doing really well again. So honestly, I couldn't be happier. So I do have some okra over here as well, which I need to harvest before going into. I will say, I think if I wanna do any type of preserving with okra outside of freeze drying, because my whole goal with the okra is to do pickled okra which I did, be, I was able to do one round of that last year. You just need such a big quantity to be able to can, especially with how much effort canning takes. You wanna make sure your time is worth your effort. That was not worth my effort that year. Um, but I almost think I need to be planting out double, if not triple the amount, letting them produce for a few weeks and then cutting the plants because eight, even though it seems like a lot and you get a lot, you still don't have enough to truly can. So with preserving, I think that's something that I think what I might do since I explained how I wanted to add these two cattle panel trellises next year, I think what I'll do with these grow bags is these grow bags are really old. These were like one of the first things I bought six years ago for the garden. Um, I might get rid of them or I might try to line my fence up with different grow bags or different um, planters or stuff like that um, to kind of help line the fence maybe with sunflowers or okra, do a whole line of okra just to give me more space um, because I think I really need to do double with that. I also have my elderberries here, which I still have not got planted. I need to plant them very soon. All right, so my tomato area, let's talk about it. So this area here is one of my in-ground places that I established, I think it was 
either the end of 2019 or the end of 2020. I want to say 19, but I want to say 20 at the same time. Either way, it was a while ago. Prior to that point of establishing this in-ground space, all of my tomatoes were on the opposite side of the garden. So me and my husband were discussing this because one thing I've noticed is ever since moving the tomatoes over to this side of the yard is they haven't produced as well which is kind of interesting because I initially thought they would do a little bit better over here because we have really hot summers. This area shades out in the middle of the day, kind of acts as like a shade cloth per se, but I'm almost, I don't know. Weather plays a big role in tomatoes and tomatoes can be really finicky. All I know is my first few years that I gardened, my tomatoes were on the opposite side of the yard. It was more sunny. I had less tomatoes and I got a really solid producing tomatoes out of those plants. Honestly, I, I don't know. This, it's been really interesting to kind of put two and two together. I don't know if I'm gonna plant tomatoes over here next year, but I don't, I don't have enough space over there where I could really devote to them. But this area kind of shades out in the middle of the day, which I always thought would be better for tomatoes, but I don't know. That's kind of what I've been thinking I might play around with. I'm trying to take notes at the current moment as we are in the actual gardening season on things I might want to tweak and do differently next year. And if I were to flip those tomatoes, it would be a big difference because I haven't had tomatoes on the opposite side of the garden in quite some time, which I honestly probably, I don't know. I amend this area all the time. I amended them. I soil tested before this year and the soil was good to go. And again, I've gotten really beautiful tomatoes, but it's just, it's crazy to see the production difference. And I don't think shade would make that much of a difference because this area still sees a good amount of sun, but it's been something I've been considering. Um, but this area has just been hit with so much blight. It's been crazy. So I have my plum regals over here, my supremos over here. And even though they've given me some beautiful, beautiful fruit, I don't think they're going to produce as much as I would have liked and hoped for. Like in previous years when my tomatoes were on the opposite side of the garden, I have gotten more production out of those spaces than some of the stuff I've ever put in the in ground space. So maybe I'll dabble with some, maybe I'll like diverse this space a little bit and not plant just only tomatoes. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. But it's been really interesting to see because over here, so I have all of my San Morzanos over there that are doing really well. And then these ones are kind of clonked and like eh. And that was initially what gave me the thought because I did all the soil testing and I did all the amending and the only thing that's truly different with these San Morzanos is the location being 10 to 15 feet away and this being more of a shady area um, because these were all planted at the same time as well and they were all thriving going into the ground. So very interesting thoughts. Um, I don't think I'm going to have the tomato year I really wanted and dreamt of, but I still have gotten a pretty decent year, so I can't complain. But those are some kind of on like the final thoughts on tomatoes, because honestly, these plants are mostly going to be coming out. I have a few plants that are slightly greeting up and putting on some fruit, but honestly, it might be too late at this point anyway. Uh, so yeah, some of these plants might be ripped out and you probably won't see them in September. My potato area is no longer a potato area. I got this bed harvested and flipped the other day. So potatoes harvested and then broccoli and lettuce went into these two beds. I also tore down some of the sunflowers and put some broccoli and spinach over there. So the potato harvest though, I did want to mention here in the garden tour. I mentioned this when I harvested the potatoes, but it really wasn't necessarily like that exciting of a harvest, but it wasn't necessarily disappointing either. So for every pound of seed potato you plant, you can expect roughly three to five pounds. I was definitely on that smaller scale. I think I was roughly 13 to 15 pounds of potatoes, which definitely isn't bad by any means, but I really wanted more than that. I would have liked to have some bigger potatoes. I only got a few that were really good size. The other ones were quite a bit smaller. So honestly, I'm not too sure what all came of the potatoes. This was definitely my best year when it comes to potatoes, but I still don't feel like I have like fully succeeded when it comes to potatoes. So if you have any tips on potato growing also, or have a favorite variety, let me know. I planted the Kennebec, which was a blight resistant potato. I really chose that potato because I did need some blight resistibility because my potatoes the year prior got knocked out with potato blight before I could really do much. They were really young and I got pretty much nothing out of them. So 
that's my little tidbit on the potatoes, but I'm really happy with how things are looking. So I got all of my beds amended and flipped the other day and planted out with you guys. And then we got multiple rains after. I really timed that beautifully. Everything has established really well. I did have uh, two broccoli plants, I think, kind of get, get eaten up by pill bugs, roly polies. So I put out some beer traps and it looks like that has worked but everything has grown quite a bit in just a handful of days which is a really good thing to see oh looky there we got our first bloom on that zinnia all right guys thank you so much for joining me for the august garden tour i honestly can't believe we're on our final seven to eight weeks of the gardening season already maybe we'll get lucky and have a little bit longer of a stretch there but we are in our final little stretch and honestly i couldn't be more proud of how this season has turned out so far and i'm really excited to see how the next eight weeks we'll go it doesn't end in eight weeks we planted stuff that's frost hardy so we're gonna go far past eight weeks but like our summer garden ends then and i love the summer garden it's one of my favorites and i love showing you guys this space so i hope you enjoyed seeing the garden today and i will see you guys all in the next one bye